Amen. I say, oh, right now, come on and give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to know when you can make a de declaration over your own self. Amen. Praise Lord. Too many times we don't speak truth and life over our own selves. Hallelujah, somebody. Come on for the choir. Give the Lord some praise. For the voices, they led us at 745 and also at 11. And we're grateful to God for them, for our worship leader. Come on, let's give God one more hand clap of praise. Amen. And all of our program participants, we give the Lord's name to praise. And it, truly, we do give honor to God and to our pastor and our assistant pastor in their absence. Amen. That's for me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ain't that like a bottom on a base. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 And again, we're grateful to God for this opportunity to stand behind this holy desk. And for our pastor, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for him and his absence. And then to Reverend Sharita, she's at North, to the ministerial staff, to the officers, the members and friends. God bless you this morning. I want to call your attention briefly and quickly to the passage of Scripture that has already been read in our hearing, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 14 through 21. Ephesians, the third chapter, verses 14 through 21. When you found it, say amen. If you're still looking, wait for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ephesians, the third chapter, the 14th verse. Here's Paul as he writes to the church at Ephesus. For this cause I bow to my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all fullness of God. Now unto him, who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus through, excuse me, through all ages, world without end. Amen. The 20th verse, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Think with me briefly on this wise he's able something real simple amen he's able look at your neighbor to the left say neighbor oh neighbor he's able look at the neighbor on the other side and say neighbor oh neighbor he's able now encourage your own self say self oh self he's able come on and give the lord a hand clap of praise Father, as we come now, we thank and praise you for this day and for all you've done, for your grace and your mercy and your love and kindness. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for you being an able God. We say thank you. Father, for the pastor of this church and the assistant pastor, we thank you. Now, God, as we come, we need a fresh word and a fresh touch. Somebody came in need of a word. Father, as I, st and I stand in need of a word, speak, Lord, for your servant hear it. Now, God, give us the clarity of thought, articulation of speech. Sincerely in our spirit and send a fresh anointing that will make preaching easy. And we promise to give your name all the glory, the honor, and the praise for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And a amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor again and say, he's able. Mm. He'll provide what you need. Amen. Praise the Lord. One of the things I believe, my sisters and my brothers, is that oftentimes we don't live up to the potential that we can in God. Amen? We, God wants so much more for us, for even the Bible declares that he wished that we would prosper and be in good health even as our souls prosper. Am I right about it? And I just believe that there's a level that God wants to take us to, but Part of it has to depend on who we are and what we do. Amen. 
But clearly, God is not a God that's going to force himself on us, and he's not going to force his hand upon us, for he is a gentleman. Amen? And so oftentimes, we get in return what we give. Amen? Y'all are familiar with Galatians, the sixth chapter? Where it says, be not deceived, for God is not mocked. That whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. But that's not always in a negative connotation, but it also is some, some good to that. Amen. Oftentimes you hear people throw that scripture out there when somebody's done them some wrong. Amen. But we have to realize as we uh, sow good, we shall also reap good in return. That's one of the things that Paul was talking to the church at Ephesus about. He was reminding them of who they were in God and what their place was in God. Because remember now, they were of the Gentile because Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles. And the majority of his writing dealt with the Gentiles. And so he had to let them know, just because you may not be of the lineage of the Hebrews of Hebrews, just because you may not have blue blood, amen, that does not negate who you are in God. Amen. And so many times if we feel that we don't have the right name, some, excuse me, somebody's not calling our name or we don't have the right connection, that disqualifies us for having certain things. Am I right about it? So we have to be mindful, my sisters and my brothers, that regardless of who we are, where we are, what our name is, we can't let somebody else define who we are in God. Oftentimes, we can let people define who we are on our, on our jobs, in our workplaces, on our positions, in our fraternities and sororities based on how long you've been there, how much money you've given, how long, if you're a charter member or a new member, makes a difference in the status, whether you hold an office or a rank that makes you somebody. But in God, there is what? There's no Greek. There's no Jew. We all are one in the kingdom of God. And the sooner we come to the knowledge of who we are, I believe we'll see God manifested in our lives. Amen. For it was Paul that was letting them know that you cannot again let people define you. He said, and because of this, I'm going to pray for you. This text here was Paul now writing a prayer and he was praying for the church at Ephesus so that they would know who they were and who they could be in God. Uh, the first thing he said is, I go to my knees in prayer, of whom the whole family in heaven is made. And he said, I pray that you might be strengthened in your inner man. You see, the first thing is if you are going to move forward in God, you have to be strengthened on the inside. Amen. A lot of us are so concerned with how we look on the outside that we don't get concerned with what's going on on the inside. But the bottom line is, as you strengthen yourself in the Word of God, I like what Reverend Bryce said at 745, you get a peace over your life. Amen. When you become strengthened in the inner man, then you get strengthened in the Word of God, and the Word of God lets you know that one word, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. When you get strengthened in the Word of God, it's not a cliche, but the Word of God is real. For the Bible says that it's like food to our stomachs, amen, that it cuts to our spirit, our spirit a sword, a spear, and a sunder. It cuts down to the marrow. The Word of God will give you strength on the inside, where if you can't make it on the outside, you can remind yourself that my inner man is strengthened, even when your body gets tired and you feel like giving up, it's something down on the inside that will keep you going. It's something down on the inside. When you strengthen on the inside, it will make a change on the outside because when you start seeing God work on the inside of your life, then God begins to manifest himself on the outside. That's why the old mothers of the church used to sing, this joy I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away because it's something down on the inside that gives you strength even in your time of trouble, in your time of despair. It doesn't matter what's going on around you because you have to understand you got strength on the inside. Watch, watch. He said, you have to first strengthen your inner man. Now, how, how do we strengthen our 
inner man. Uh, we have to take time in the Word of God. Amen. Uh, it says we ought to encourage ourselves through psalms, hymns, and spiritual psalms, and we have to take time to read the Word. Uh, now, it's good to read the Word, but you have to read it for understanding. Amen. Uh, you have to take time out to get into the Word so that you get the meat of the Word. Uh, so when somebody says something, uh, it's not just what you hear, but it's something that you know. It means you have experience with the Word of God. Now, how do we get strong on the outside? We had to John, touch the mic because some of y'all making it harder for me now. Yeah, yeah, we have to go to the gym or go on the track and start running so that we can get more strength. But that's the same way it is with the Word of God. You just can't pick it up when you feel like it. Pick it up when something's going wrong. But you have to spend time in the Word. I mean, if you are going to get strong on the outside, huh? you normally have to have a regimen huh? where when you wake up in the morning, huh? you go running. Huh? And if you don't go in the morning, huh? you go at night. Huh? But you take time and you put it in your schedule. Huh? That's the same thing with the Word of God. Huh? You have to put it in your schedule huh? and make time for it so that you can get power down on the inside huh? that will keep you going huh? when everybody else says no. Huh? You got something down on the inside huh? that will make you say yes. You make you run when nobody's chasing you. Make you cry when nothing's wrong. Make you laugh when things are going bad because you're strengthened on the inside. When he prayed, he, he said, I pray that you would be strengthened on the inside uh, and strengthen your inner man. Uh, but he did not, y'all forgive me, but it is what it is this morning, amen. But he's still able. Uh, you know what? Uh, when you strengthen your inner man, uh, he said you have to have faith in Christ. Now, now th that, that, that sounds good, uh, amen. But, but, but th the Bible declares that without faith, it's impossible to please God and those that come to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that what? diligently seek him. So, so when you have faith in Christ, you take your time to have faith in him because you continue to seek after him. Anybody ever had a, a, a boo, amen, tell me somebody, and, and you know, B-O-O, -O, not cast, but a friendly ghost boo, but you had a boo or you had somebody that you believed in and, and you had faith that that was the one that God sent you and you did everything you could. Now, don't look around, amen, somebody. But you did everything you could uh, to get their attention. You sought after them day and night. I mean, you went to bed with them on their mind. Uh, you woke up with them on your mind. Uh, you would text them in late at night, uh, and you sought after them. Don't you know that's the same way it is? Uh, when we seek after Christ, uh, it ought to be a good morning, Lord. Uh, it ought to be a good night, Lord. Uh, it ought to be I'm seeking your face in the noonday. Because uh, you know, if you didn't hear from them, your day was all jacked up. Uh, why you ain't calling? me. Well, why ain't you call me? And you know how we do. But now God is saying the same thing. If you're going to seek me, you got to call me early. For the Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is yet near. Because what? He has a listening ear and he wants to know that we love him. Because if you talk to God, God's going to talk back to you. If you pray to God, God's going to intercede for you. If you bless God, God is going to bless you because he's just God and he's good like that. Understand? Say you 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 got to have faith. And, 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 and you know, faith is something that you have to grow. Can, can I talk just for a few more minutes? Uh, faith is a learned thing. Amen. Uh, you, you, we, we just don't sit down on a chair because we sit down in it, uh, but we practice sitting down in the chair. Uh, and so we know if I sit in the chair, uh, the chair is going to hold me uh, because that's what it's supposed to do. Uh, but you find somebody uh, that sat down in a broken aluminum chair. Uh, the next time they go to sit down, they're going to check the chair. 
to see if it worked because it failed them. That's why Jesus told Peter, I prayed for you. Satan desires to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith would not shrink. When you start seeking God, your faith will not shrink, but your faith will get built up. The more you put your trust in God, the more God knows he can trust you with what he wants to give you. That's why Deuteronomy says, every where you go, your feet trod, you shall be blessed, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in your coming, blessed in your going. Do I have any blessed folk in the house this morning? Say yeah. Understand, he said, so your faith, you got to have faith in Christ and be rooted in love. And I'm almost done. Is that all right? Amen. He said, be rooted in love. Now, now, now that's, that's challenging because uh, we get that word twisted. We, we get it twisted believing that love only works when it's working for us. Amen. But love works best when it's working. Everything's not working in our favor. Because what? Because what God so loved the world that what he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have what everlasting life. Now, it's easy to love somebody that loves you. Am I right about it? Yeah, uh -huh. thank you, brother. It's easy to love somebody that loves you, but it's more challenging to love somebody that may not or does not love you, and you know it. Amen? It's more challenging, but you get the greater reward, because what? Even while we were yet sinners, the Bible says that Christ died on our behalf. Why? Because he loved us in spite of us. I mean, if justice had had its way, I don't know about you, but I probably wouldn't be here today. But because he loved me and he loved you, he went to an old rugged cross and he hung it. Hey, God, I, I didn't want to get there yet, Alyssa, but watch this, watch this, watch this. You have to understand that God is an able God. And he said, when you do these things, then God is going to blow your mind. Anybody here wanted a great expectation from God? I mean, you've been in it long enough, but now you need God to show up in your life. You've been in the fight long enough, and you need God because he's able. He can do what he says he's going to do. How do I know? When Daniel was in the lion's den, he was able to keep him with Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego were in the fire. He's able. When Joseph had a dream, he was able. When David fought Goliath, he was able. When Jesus went on the cross, he was able. Because you're here and you're a survivor, he's able. He's able. He's able. How do I know? Because all he has to do is speak a word. He said, let there be, and it was light. Somebody say, able. He said, oh, man, take the dust out of the ground and become a living soul. What does that make him? I think you got it. When you got sick and he said, be healed, what does that make him? When he woke you up this morning, started you on your way, what does that make him? When he put joy in your life, what does that make him? When he kept you in the midnight hour, what does that make him? He's able, able, able. Yes, he is. 
Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's able to do exceedingly. That means beyond understanding, abundantly, more than you can expect. Above all, we ask or think. I D-double dog dare you in Jesus' name. Start asking God for big stuff because why? He's Come on and give God some praise. Hey! Hey! <laughs> and because he's able, he doesn't take long to do what he has to do. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand all over the church. Hallelujah. Come on, give him an able praise. I, I don't know what your expectation level is, but I, I need you to take it up a notch higher. Hallelujah. Thank you. Somebody got it. That was a praise right there. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know what you're asking God for. But take it a notch higher. I don't know what your expectation on your job, in your family, in your finances, with your friends, or wherever you, in your health. I declare, take it a notch higher. Because he's able. And you know, if he's able, he can do anything but fail. Hey! <laughs> hey! Hey! There's no failure in God. And guess what? If he don't let it work out, <laughs> he's got something better for you down the street. Hello, somebody. So don't get mad if it don't work. <laughs> just, just, uh, <laughs> what's that thing we were saying in the office? Watch me, watch me. Watch, you know that song, uh, Nay Nay and all of that? You go ahead and watch me, watch me, watch me. Oh, now y'all don't know. Y'all so Holy Ghost, uh-huh. Yeah, but, but you know what I'm talking about. If I hit the right beat, I wish you knew it. We would play it, and all y'all be out here, Shanae Nay or whatever it is. Uh-huh. So, so you just got, thank you. I know you got it. So you got to watch him work. Watch him work. Oh, yeah, you, can, you, you got that. Okay, you got that one. Watch him work. Uh-huh. Yeah. You got to watch him work because he's able. He's able to do, somebody say exceedingly, abundantly, above all, I ask or think according to the power that works in me. Now give God a praise for the power that's in you because he's working it out for your good. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. This morning, if you're here, if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, come on down to the altar. If you've never prayed to send us prayer, I, I need to be saved. Now, it's not something that you want. It's really something that you need. Hallelujah. You make the decision, but it's what you need. Come on down to the altar. If for maybe some reason life showed up, and anybody know, life will show up when you least expect it. On your best day, life will show up and trip you up. Maybe that's your story this week. Life showed up. But you want to come down to the yard and say, you know what, God, I, I know you're able, and I know it's still working for my good. Come on down to the yard. You just need to rededicate your faith, rededicate your life. Don't, don't stunt nobody else. No, or stunt, stunt. Don't look at anybody else. Just come on down for you. Sometimes you got to go for yourself. And you know what I've learned? The minute the first person steps out, the floodgates open up. Everybody else comes so 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 while you waiting on them, they waiting on you to see who's gonna be first. Just say peekaboo, I see you. Come on. And say, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go get this thing right. Then if you're here this morning, if you don't have a church home, we invite you to come. There's no better place than Union Bethel under the good leadership of Pastor C. Wright, Reverend Sharita. You need to be saved, rededicate your life, unite with the church. 
And last but not least, maybe you just need special prayer because you got some stuff going on and you just want to leave it at the altar and let God know that you believe he's able. Come on down to the altar if you're here this morning. Wonders work. Come on, our sisters, come and bless the name of the Lord for her. In the blood. Come on, that's, that's selfish. Now give God some praise for our sister. Oh, there's power, power, wonders. Is there another to come? In the precious blood of the land. Is there another? Come on, is there another to come? Don't, don't wait on anybody else. Come on and get it for yourself. You gotta seek him for yourself. Wonders work in power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power. Come on, our sisters, come and bless the name of the Lord. Wonders work in power in the precious blood. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us now, it's Thanksgiving time, Union Bethel. Amen. It's time to give thanks. The Bible says, give thanks with a grateful heart. And we ask of our ushers if you would now come and uh, bring our tithe box over for the Bible declares, bring you your tithes and your offerings to the storehouse of God and whereby put him to the test and see if he won't open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have our debit machines on the side. If you're watching by way of streaming, please go to the page and hit the donate button. Amen. Uh, don't be cheap with God. God's never been cheap with you. Amen, somebody. Let's now get our offering in our hand that we might bless it and pray for it. Pray over it. Amen. Fathers, we come now. We thank and praise you for this day and for all you've done. We thank you for the blessings that you give to us. And now, God, we just want to be a blessing back unto you. For we know you don't need anything that we have because the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. But, God, out of obedience, we want to give back unto you. So thank you, Father, for this opportunity that we might be a blessing back to your kingdom. Now, God, we thank you. Give it the increase as we sow. God, we thank you we will reap. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We have, again, the devil machines on the side. If you want to go there, you can go straightway there. If not, you can stand all over the church. Be led by the direction of the ushers.